What's up, family? It's your girl, Shanice, and I want to welcome you back to the Woman's Palace So today, guys, I just want to be vulnerable and just encourage you guys on this walk with Christ, right? Because we're going to fall. The Bible talks about the righteous man falls seven times, but he get back up again. And I want to talk about falling. Um, transparent moment. Um, you can say in a sense, I fail. Um... I kind of went back to what God delivered me from. And in a sense, it was temptation. It was the enemy trying to deceive me, right? Because um, I always talk about, well, I don't talk about it, but I'm going to start talking about it. Forgiveness doesn't equal recon reconciliation, right? You don't have to necessarily go back to the person that you forgive, right? You forgave, right? But in a sense, um, I've been having like warfare and I felt like I had to prove that I forgave this person. And the way I was going to prove it to them is by allowing them back into my life, right? Maybe this person changed. Maybe God has worked in it, right? But I had no peace about it. So I already kind of knew, right? So um, I found myself kind of entertaining it. But in my mind, I already knew like, this is not what I want. Like, I never had any peace about it. I knew that it wasn't what it was going to be, right? But in a sense, I was kind of kind of in this season of, I'm in this season of waiting on God, right? I kind of got a lot done. So I'm just really waiting on God. So I wouldn't, kind of like an idol season. And um, I don't know if I said this before, an idol mind is the devil's playground. So I'm in this sense. I'm like, well, I ain't got nothing else to do. I don't have nobody else to talk to. So I'll just talk to him, right? And I'm feeding into what I know it's not going to be, but I don't have nothing else to do. I'm bored. So why not? Right. And in a sense, I do have stuff to do, but this is just the temptation. This is the, what the enemy has set up for me to fall, but by God's grace, God delivered me. And I'm here talking about it because I was just listening to somebody else's testimony and she was just explaining how she fell. And I was just, God just started ministering to me like God is a God of grace, right? He says, he who hides his sin shall not prosper. But if you confess your sin, God is faithful to forgive you and cleanse you, right? I had to be real with God, right? Because I kind of got, it was like an eye opener. I was having a conversation with the person that God delivered me from, right? I, forgiveness, you know, I, I don't hold on to it. I'm not holding on to the past. So we cool, right? We good. I ain't got no beef with this man. Let's talk. But he started to say something and it was like an eye opener. And I, I heard somebody say it was like an epiphany, right? All of a sudden it was just like, hold on, Shanice. God sends people in your life to reveal you to you. So in a sense, I don't even necessarily feel like this was a bad thing. I kind of beat myself about, beat myself up about it. But then God spoke to me. Sometimes we can be on this healing journey, right? Walking after Christ, but we can bury some things. We surrender some things to God and we don't surrender other things to God. But as you're moving closer to God, God wants all of you, right? So he was revealing to me things that I didn't surrender to him. Things that, you know, I still, you know, I'm still holding on to that I didn't give to him. Because why is it that I feel like... I have to have somebody to talk to, right? I have to begin to question myself on what is in me that even allowed this to come back, knowing what I know. And this is how I know spiritual warfare is real. Temptation is real because how can I know what I know and still go back, right? It's the mind battle. So when he said this, I realized that I was the problem. It wasn't necessarily the person that was the problem because a person can only do what you allow. I allowed this person back in. Why? Because... I didn't cast down the imagination that forgiveness equal re reconciliation. And not only that, that I had to prove myself to somebody. If God knows I forgave, if I forgave, why do I have, feel like I have to prove to somebody that is sitting here saying, oh, you didn't forgive because you don't want to be bothered with me. You, you, trying to basically manipulate me in a sense, right? And um, I found myself just being really hard on myself, right? Like, I can't believe it. I came this far for me to fall, right? And there's no condemnation in Christ. 
And that's what God just began to reveal to me. I'm a God of grace. You confessed it, right? I cried out to God, like, I repent. Like, you know, I, I see where I was wrong at, right? Because I entertained it. And in the sense, sometimes we can get so, um, I wouldn't necessarily say cocky, right? But we can kind of feel like we reached a certain height in our spiritual journey, right? And, oh, okay, I can deal with this. And it won't affect me. Oh, well, I ain't got nothing else to do. I can deal with this, not realizing how cunning and sneaky the enemy is. He made an open door just that fast when in my mind, it ain't nothing like that. I, I, I never had any peace about it. I never, it was never supposed to go where it went. It was never my intentions, but I played along with it because I was bored. I was like, well, he, and the, the crazy thing about it, he will always call when I don't, I'm not doing anything, right? It's the idle time. So, um, I just thought, you know, after listening to that testimony, cause this video just kept popping up and I'm like, okay, maybe this is God speaking. I watched the testimony and I just seen, and God just began to minister into me. And she was just saying like, you know, sometimes we can look at other people, how would it look? And then she was like, God said exactly how it looks like we are here to show God's character. God is a God of grace. God is a God of mercy. The Bible say we will fall. We would think we are a fool to walk this walk and not fall. But the problem will be if you stay there. Don't stay condemned, right? Don't stay in that mindset, beating yourself up. And I think that's just where my deliverance came from. Because these last couple of days, as you know, I exit my way out of that thing. And it was just it was a fight. It was a fight because I had to be real with myself. I had to take accountability and I had to, you know, lay down boundaries and certain things. And then, you know, the person want to come try to paint me out to be this character that I know that I'm not right. Trying to make it seem like I'm just this evil person that want to hurt somebody. But that was just all the enemy. Um, but it was just eye opener to me like that's the deliverance to not hold on to that right the condemnation of okay what am I going to say it's not about what you're going to say it's about your relationship with God get back up you're going to fall on this journey and that's what I'm realizing it's a difference between intentionally sinning right and being in that or if we can say iniquity right the sin that you love the sin that you don't want to give up and 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 then there's a difference between, you know, falling, struggling, but still crying out to God, right? Because I never, I just kept crying out to God because it was like, it, in a sense, it was actually good for it to have happened because it revealed to me that I still had areas that I needed to surrender to. There's still areas in me that I need to give to God, that I need to be aware of, that I need to pray, right? Because if it didn't happen, maybe it would have never came up, right? There is time release curses, um, things that are hidden, things that lay dormant in our lives that will only um, awaken or become uh, more known or visible once you get to certain heights or certain levels or when you get in marriage or when you hit that success, right? And I feel like it was a blessing in disguise because it was God revealing to me, okay, we need to deal with this now. We need to nip this in the bud now because where I'm taking you in this next season, I didn't need that to be there. So in a sense, even though you can feel bad on yourself, like I can't believe I failed. I can't believe I went back to what you delivered me to, right? And then I started to feel bad. I'm like, gosh, I understand how the Bible says that they return to their vomit, right? Even though that was never my intentions I had in my mind set on stone that I would never go back to that I was entertaining it in a sense and how do you entertain the enemy without you know the enemy trying to get his fangs in you so to say right so um yeah that is just a transparent moment of my life right and just saying like we are gonna fall like I think it's ludicrous and it's crazy to me how God literally now that I'm thinking about it he had somebody else tell a testimony um that they fit not necessarily fail but their flaws right where people are being transparent and I really feel like this is God oh my gosh because it's popping up in my mind as I'm making this video these last this last week 
I just been listening to other people, you know, repenting and basically saying their faults or their flaws or basically, you know, how they got it wrong, right? So to say, missing the mark and how they're getting back up again. And I think, well, I know that is God ministering to my soul. Like, sometimes we can just feel like we want to be so perfect. I will never fall. I'm never going to fall into sin. I got God and this and this and that. And that's ludicrous. Like, right? We're going to fall. The Bible says you will fall, but you're going to get back up again. And you cannot allow that fall to keep you in condemnation. You cannot allow that fall to make you beat yourself up, right? I'm so dumb. I can't believe this. I've been walking with him. I know my Bible. I know this, but yet I fail. Like, you know, don't allow that or that condemnation to overtake you, but rather put your trust back in Jesus and just really lean and depend on him. Because like I was saying, listening to these people and certain people, like, um, if I'm going to be honest, I kind of held some at a pedestal. Um, yeah, you know, my whole perspective of that is changing. That's something God is working in me. In a sense, but I look at other people, as you can say, elders or people who's been longer in Christ than me that I feel that are different ranks than me, right? And I just felt like, oh, it's no way that they can be deceived. And God is showing me that they have been deceived, right? They don't stay there, but it's just, you know, and it just makes me realize that, Shanice, you have to give yourself grace for being human. If God gave you the grace, why not receive it? And another thing that I'm working on, um, we have to learn how to receive God's love. If, if it's anything, if it's any prayer point that you want to pray every day, I am learning. God, help me. Give me the capacity to receive your love because a lot of times we reject what God is trying to give us because we don't have the capacity. We don't know how to accept love, right? In the world that we live in, we don't know how to receive it. But with that being said, if God is extending it to you, why reject it? If God is giving you the grace, if God is still blessing you, if God is like, okay, confess it, don't hide it, don't run from me, right? Because in a sense, I felt myself, and this is just the spiritual warfare. This is the battle that was taking place inside. I felt myself not wanting to talk to God about it, right? Trying to act like it's not there. But see, that was the enemy trying to make me hide my sin so I do not prosper. And um, when I say sin, miss the mark because, yeah, we're just going to keep it at that. But instead of being real with God, God, I have, a, I don't know what this is. I don't know why I feel the way I feel, right? I know, right? I had a knowing, never had any peace about it, never had intentions about going back and establishing anything. It was just, you know what? I'm bored. Let's talk. You, you, you know, and certain things will come up in the conversation. Of course, you will set boundaries, but some people don't respect boundaries, but it was just like, I ain't taking him serious anyway, not realizing I'm forming that, that soul tie, right? We don't understand what's going on behind the scenes because we're getting so caught up on, well, you know, I'm not doing nothing right now anyway. No, 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 no. But that is my transparent moment. And I'm just coming to encourage you guys that you will fall. You will fall. Nobody is exempt from falling. I believe it's all about getting back up. It's all about repenting. It's all about a heart posture and just really staying close to God, seeking his face, seeking his word, not falling into condemnation, knowing that you're not exempt from temptation, knowing you're not exempt from um, uh, deception, right? Falling into the enemy's trap, right? It's just being about being vigilant, being sober, and just leaning completely on God because we can't get so far off into this walk that we think we know it all. We think we're never going to fail, um, fall, and then you fall and you don't even realize you fail because in a sense you got prideful. In a sense you feel like because you're reading your Bible every day and you know you got the Holy Spirit ministering to you that you're never going to be deceived. No. We got to get out of the spirit of pride and we have to understand that nobody's exempt from deception. We may fall, right? I just feel like as, as you go stronger and deeper in God, the fall should become less and less, right? Um, 
repent quickly. That's what I'm all about. Repent quickly. Get back right with God. Don't dwell in it. Don't sit there and be condemning because God is a God of grace. God is a God of mercy. We have to understand his character and we have to take on that character. We have to learn how to receive him and receive his love and receive what it is that he offers us in full and cast out anything that is contrary to his word cast out anything any voice that is trying to come speak against what god said is truth the bible says let god be truth and every man a liar if god forgave me if god don't remember it why am i going to sit here and pity pity myself about it i can't believe it it is what it is but you know what god now that you showed me me now that we are at this point in my life where I don't, I don't, I don't know what caused me to fall, but Father God help me so I don't fall in that area no more, right? It's all about making prayer points now that you have fallen and gotten back up. Make prayer points so you don't make that same fall again, that you don't make that same mistake again. And the last thing I want to point out, do not think that forgiveness equals reconciliation. You do not have to allow people back into your life just because you forgave them. Do not feel like you have to prove yourself, right? Because in a sense, that was my story. I felt like because of how they were talking, see people, can, that's why you can't even talk with the enemy. I'm realizing, baby, don't even have a conversation with them. Because when you when you start to have a conversation, I see why Eve fell. Because the conversation can get your mind, okay? The enemy can start dropping seeds. Like, well, you know, because the enemy make it make sense. That's one thing I'm realizing. It's not like it don't make sense. The enemy going to make it make sense and have you questioning yourself. Like, well, I mean, did I forgive if I don't necessarily want you in my life? No, 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 no. Bye. The Bible tells me to be as wise as a serpent. I'm supposed to be as wise as you, meaning I shouldn't even be talking to you because I know that if you can manipulate one third of the angels that know God, that's seen God, that's been in his presence, what makes you think you can't deceive me, a human being that ain't seen God, right? So this is where the wisdom comes in at. And it's just to, you don't have to prove yourself, <laughs> Don't prove yourself. Don't think you got to reconcile with people. If people want to run off with the narrative that you bitter and you ain't forgave them because you don't want them in their life, let them have it. <laughs> I always talk about this and it's crazy to me how I'm talking about it, but I fell into it. It just lets me know that I have to be more vigilant. I have to be more watchful, especially in this day and age, especially in this time. You got you to gotta let the enemy be the enemy you got to stay close to God and you got to, even if you do fall, baby, because this walk ain't easy. This walk ain't for the faint in heart, okay? A pure soldier in the spirit walking with Christ. Get back up, okay? So with that being said, I hope this little transparency testimony time helps somebody. I hope you guys take heed to this word and I want you guys to go out and be a light in this dark world.